Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel blog post. Today we're going to take a look at how we can extract a list from a larger data range based on a specific criteria without using things like auto filter or other built-in Excel options or functions. And we're going to use an array formula to extract the data and also make it dynamic so we can make changes to our criteria and have the list automatically adjust. So let's see how we can do that in Excel. So here's our scenario. Here we have in columns A, B, and C a list of guests, 25 long, whether they're attending our event or not, and whether they've made a donation towards our organization. And what I want to do in columns E and F is to be able to extract without any spaces or blanks in between the list of the names based on the value in column B. And so we've used cell K1 to be our criteria. If it has a Y, I want to generate that list. If I change that to an N, therefore now it'll just give me a list of Ns and just have blanks in the area below. And again, if I change any of those from uh, Ys to Ns or Ns to Ys, let's say I take this group and make them Ys, notice it automatically adjusts and reduces that list. And then in columns H and I, I want to be able to generate a list of anyone who's made a donation. Maybe that's greater than the value that we have in cell L1. So if I made that a zero, that should give me a list of everyone who made a donation. If I made this 50, it would give me a list of everyone who's made a donation greater than 50. So these are the lists that we've created. Now let's see how we've accomplished that. Well, here's the list of functions that we've used, index, small, if, row, and if error. It's an array formula. Now, an array formula is a formula that performs multiple calculations to return either a single result or multiple results. And it has to be entered using Control, Shift, and Enter. You can't just hit Enter. And it will result in curly brackets around the formula, as you notice the formula down here. And these brackets cannot be entered manually. It's an indication by Excel that you've entered the formula as an array formula with Control, Shift, and Enter. And here is the formula that we have in cell E1. Again, you can see the curly brackets around it. And we've used if error index, small if, and two row functions to accomplish it. So let's click on cell E2 and take a look at the formula and see how we built it. Now starting at the outside and working our way in, the first thing you'll see is that it's wrapped in an if error function. Now if error, the syntax for that is equals if error value and value if error. So if I click just inside that parentheses, the value is our main index formula with the small if and row functions, and the value if error is just a blank. So what this says is if the formula works, give me the result of that formula, if it generates an error, give me just a blank. So you can see this formula goes all the way down to row 26, but since these would generate an error, instead it gives me a blank. So if I, for example, went in and deleted the if error function and hit Control Shift Enter, you see I have an error. If I copy that up, I get the same results up here, but I get an error down here. And what the if error function does is just return a blank so I don't have to see a bunch of unsightly errors down there. So that's our if error function. So the main portion of our formula is an index function. And an index formula or the index function, the syntax is equals index array row number and column number. So our array here is just cells A2 to A26. Our row number is the small if and two row functions, and our column number is column number one. Now you can see column number is indicated in square brackets, meaning it's optional. And since our array for our index function is only one column, I didn't need to include that, but in this case I did. So if we look at the row number, that is generated by the small if and two row function that we have in our formula. So that's really the crux of what generates 
the row that we pull the value or the name from and populate our uh, function with. So let's take a look at that and see how that is constructed. So the small function, you can see the syntax for that is array, which is if and row, and the k number is row 1, 1, in this case in cell E2, and we'll see it indexes down as we go further down in our list. So what the small function does is generate an array or a list and then say, give me the first smallest, second smallest, third smallest, fourth smallest, etc. number in that list. So you see as we go down, the k number for the formula in E2 is row 1, 1, which will generate a 1. The next one down is row 2, 2, which will generate a 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, etc. So it's just going to give me the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, etc. smallest value or row number within that list that the if function generates. So the if function here is what generates the array for the small function. So let's walk through that and see how that works. If we click just inside the if function here, this is where it really becomes an array formula. Now again, an array formula performs multiple calculations rather than a single calculation. So in this case, you can see the logical test for our if function is do the values in column B equal K1, which is a Y. So we're not just comparing B2 to K1, we're comparing all of column B from B2 to B26 to K1. So it's performing actually 25 calculations there to determine the result of that logical test. So if we hit F9 to see the result of that, you'll see, if I click on the down arrow here, that it's true, false, true, 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 false, etc. Wherever there's a Y in column B, I'll get a true. Wherever there's an N, I'll get a false because it's comparing it to K1, which has a Y. And then the second part of our if statement is the value if true, and that's just row A2 to A26. So again, if I hit F9, it's just going to give me the row numbers between 2 through 26. So this if function is just going to return the values or the row numbers 2 through 26 where there is a true in that place setting. So I'm going to escape out of this. And if I click inside the small function and select array, which is the if and row functions, and I hit F9, you'll see the array turns out to be a 2 for a row that has a Y in it, then a false, then 4, 5, 6, because those all have Ys, etc. And so the small function says, give me an array, and then what's the K number? Well, in this case, the row 1, 1 here will return a number one. So it's asking me what's the first smallest in that array, two, false, four, five, six, false, 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 ten, etc. So again, if I click inside my index, select row number, and I hit F9, it's going to give me number one. And the reason is it would have given me row two, but notice at the end I did a subtract or a minus one to move it up because I didn't start my list until row two, so I needed to get it back to that, which gives me Jeremy Wright. So let's just take a look at the example in cell E6. I have in my if function, the logical test will give me that series of trues and falses. My value of true will give me the rows two through 26. If I click inside my small function, my array I hit F9, it's going to give me 2, false, 4, 5, 6, false, etc. And my K function, which is row 5, 5, is going to give me the result of 5. So when I'm looking for, in terms of the index, row number, all that is going to tell me I want the fifth smallest in 2, 4, 5, 6, 10, etc. So I should get a result of 10. So I hit F9, I get... 9 because if you see I have a minus 1 here. So it gave me the result of 10 
and then I subtracted one from that again because I started my list in row two rather than in row one. And that returns Catherine Brown, which is in row 10. But again, it's the ninth one in my list of A2 to A26. And in column F, I just have a VLOOKUP function, which says, take a look of what's in column E and give me the result of column B that matches that. I did the same thing here. I said, take the result of cell H2 and do a lookup in our original table and give me the result of the third column, which is the donation column, and just return that value. So this is how you can use an array formula with index small if row and if error to return dynamic list. And again, as we change the criteria, it will automatically adjust. And there you have it. I hope you like what you see. If you do like what you see here, please take a minute to share this post on your favorite social network. I can be found on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So I hope you enjoy this. If you'd like to see more, please feel free to stop by my website, excel-bytes.com, and I hope you subscribe. So have a great day and happy excelling.